My senior year, uh, they opened Ahern Fieldhouse, and and what a what a tremendous facility. We at that particular time, it wasn't completed. They had the apex on each end of, uh, of Ahern still not completed. They had to put up tarpaulins and everything to keep the weather out when the games were played. We still had to dress over at Old Nichols, and we came across the campus in a bus, and the gardener came up with these uh, Batman capes that uh, for us to wear from, from Nichols to Ahern to just keep us warm and everything. <laughs> I tell you, I, I think all of us, I, I don't know that there wasn't one player that was embarrassed by these big, huge capes that looked like we were Batman. At the gate where we went in, there was always a bunch of little kids. And when we had these big old capes covered clear down below, we just to grab a kid or two and put them under that cape and take them in the ball game. <laughs> and they just loved that. The workman that worked on a hern had uh, gotten a little gambling pot, uh, pot up on uh, who was going to score, on our team, who was going to score the first field goal. And of course, uh, the guys took numbers. Was it going to be Ernie Barrett? Was it going to be Lou Hitch, Jack Stone, or whoever? Well, we got the tip off. It had had a wide open layoff. We basically had a half court fast break from the tip off. Tip off. It had a wide open layup on the left side, and he was ambidextrous, but he missed that layup. But the guy that got the tip originally followed it up, and that was Lou Hitch. So he scored first field. Playing in a Hearn field house was uh, truly extraordinary. Uh, the fan support was unequal in my experience. It was a place where you open the door to walk in and you're like, well, there's nothing special. And then you kind of come underneath the, on the track and you're still going, oh, I really don't see it. And then you turn the corner and there it is. And it was a place that was totally different when it was empty to when it filled up on game night. And once you got in there and the crowd was there and alive, it certainly became a magical place. When you walk up those steps to, to go out to the court, there's no feeling like it. Uh, the crowd you know, gets into it and they start that chant and, and the noise level is as high as anything could possibly be. And there was a track, that indoor track, you had to cross that and there'd always be a line of people just kind of accordioned off our entrance. And it seems like from the time you got onto that track until you got onto the court. I don't remember much about that. It was like you were just transcending into a different uh, arena. I mean, an arena of action, an arena of excitement. And um, your heart would race and adrenaline surge and, and all of a sudden you're on the court. You can pump the adrenaline and that fan crowd could get your adrenaline going so high, you would actually jump too high for rebounds. You'd jump too high to get your shot off and, and you'd start missing. So. When you started, you could get yourself mentally prepared and you're down in a quiet locker room, but then as you say, you start getting closer to the door and when that door swung open and you still had quite a ways to before you got out to the court, the adrenaline just started going crazy and you really needed to take some deep breaths because those fans could get you so motivated. The crowd was so close to the court, you know, and they had the big balcony in Ahern, and, uh, uh, but the students were all by the court. I remember the guys inbounding the ball, you know, Students stand, literally standing right beside him. You know, he almost had to move the students back to get my place to down the ball on that sideline. I mean, you could reach out and touch the touch the players and touch the officials like Jim Bain, and, and uh, there was just a uniqueness about it. Some of the scoreboard clocks, the uh, old scoreboard clock, uh, was very unique to its time. Then later, uh, well, the court was raised about two feet, and it, it appeared that the, you know the coaches were looking right up at the players. The raised floor. To me, it was a better floor to jump off of than the uh, stationary floor that's always uh, in the same place. Uh, the floor was very easy on the legs. Smoke accumulated up in the uh, rafters, and actually, we could, we could, it affected us on the court. Uh, people could smoke in there, and uh, it wasn't just smoke. I think it was also dust. It was, it was, it was kind of a dusty place. Where they had a dirt track around the outside. And, 
people that run on it. When I first came in there, they had the tartan surface down, which everybody had kind of gone to in the 70s. So those are the first times I was in there was they had the tartan surface down to play basketball, which just didn't seem right. They got it back to they got it back to hardwood before they closed the doors. Practice it was cold as hell. Excuse the expression in there because the, the janitors were not janitors or the maintenance crew were opening the doors at the end, bringing in the equipment, setting it in there, and we were out there practicing. From that standpoint, I remember it being cold. Uh, I remember it being extremely warm <laughs> during games. And the enthusiasm, the enthusiasm was probably the best it was in the country at the time. And there was nobody that had that type of enthusiasm for basketball. To be in the arena an hour and a half, two hours before when they threw open the garage door and watch the students just Unbelievable sight to see those students running in. When they opened the uh, that door, and it was like a herd of cattle. It'd be like the like that uh, scene you see in Spain when they have the annual bull, <laughs> where they I guess the bulls chase the people and they're all over and they're you know grabbing. Uh, that's kind of how it was. It, you just like open the gate and here they come. And they all had one thing in common: that they loved Kansas State basketball. They loved being a part of that tradition over there, and they loved camping out in cold weather. There was a, a, a badge of honor to sleep out there in the cold and wait in line for a week or whatever it took. The goosebumps that I get just talking about it. I mean, I talked to Tim Jankovic, and Tim was playing in the game against Indiana. And the first play of the game, offensively, uh, K-State had, they ran a backdoor play for a, for a dunk. And like I said, I, I remember the noise. The, the, Tim said he felt like going back defensively, he had very little control. It was like the, the noise was moving him. You just can't explain. It would just go through you. It was, it was wonderful. I was up in the crow's nest covering a game, and they had those big old typewriters back in the day uh, that type up game notes and play by play. It was so loud up there, and of course, that was the peak of the sound coming off the rafters. Uh, that this heavy typewriter was vibrating down the table. In fact, I have some hearing loss today, and I went <laughs> here a while back to, my, to an audiologist, and he said, you have been exposed to some extreme high noise it's sometime in your life. And I went, well, you know, because I'd come home from games and my ears would be ringing. That's, that is how, and you could hardly hear, even in the timeouts, you know, the coaches would be, you'd had to learn to read lips. All of those nights in Ahern, it just seemed like the whole world seemed to be looking at, at the Hearn Fieldhouse that night. And uh, I think I saw magical things happen, happen in that building down through the years, right up to the end, uh, till they beat Missouri in the final game in there. How fitting was it to have Norm be the coach, the opposing coach for that day, and he had his Tigers wear the t-shirts that listed all the great coaches that had been at Kansas State and coached in that building. And then a classic game where Long Kruger gets up in the, in the grill of Norm Stewart and go to nose to nose on that. And you know, it was a perfect ending to that building to have a classic game come down to the final few seconds and for a K-State victory. During the 38 year period that, that Ahern was the home of K-State basketball, K-State won more conference championships, Big 7, Big 8 championships, than any other school in the conference including the school just a little ways down I-70 to the east. More, K more conference championships were won by K-State during that period than anybody else. There is not a better place to watch college basketball than Hearn Fieldhouse. And never is a long time. I'd almost say never on that one.